Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Asia E University. Welcome to CEO Forum, the future of jobs. And the team is unperturbed, but we mutated stronger. The World Economic Forum predicted that machines will spend as much time on work-based tasks as human employees by 2025. Artificial intelligence, or in short, AI, is coming to the workplace and is about to change everything, including how humans learn. A new era of automation will profoundly change everyday tasks in, this, in the office and in the field. Workers must adapt and adopt en masse by reskilling for these new workloads. And it will take new technology to help them to do it at a scale. AI power tools will play a key part in the process, identifying new areas of improvement and making individuals learning recommendations. This webinar addresses several issues in the context before COVID-19, during COVID-19 and post COVID-19. Does this mean Human should be worried about machines taking their jobs. What are the future of jobs in 2021 or beyond? Are we adaptable and resilient enough to write out these coming changes? How to prepare ourselves for these new challenges? In this forum, we are pleased to have a panel of three doyans in future of jobs from Malaysia, Saudi Arabia and USA to share their first-hand experience and the lesson learned on how their organization through their leadership has emerged stronger due to COVID pandemic. Please welcome Mr. Said Fazil, Said Sofi, Director of Strategic Investment, Felda, and former CEO of Felda Middle East, Sandrian Berhad. The second speaker is Dr. Zul Baharum, CEO and Executive Coach and Facilitator of Sajatra Leadership Initiative Malaysia. And the last speaker is Dr. Tan Tech Kiong, Commissioner Leader and Adjunct Professor at Stanford University, USA. Please welcome them, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh, Xiao, shall moderate this session. In terms of procedures, I shall present the same issues to these three speakers, followed by their responses and then question and answer from the audience. The participants can post their questions online and they will be answered during the question and answer. The subsequent question from, the, from me shall be addressed to another speaker on a rotational basis. After all the speakers have given their views, there shall be a 10 minute a uh, question and answer to summarize the topic for today. Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen. The first question is addressed to <coughs> Mr. Said, followed by uh, Dr. Zul and then uh, Dr. Tan. Uh, Dr. Tan prefers to be called TK, yeah, passionately. Okay, the question. Just before COVID-19 pandemic, the emergence of fourth industrial revolution or in short, IR 4.0 was picking up. According to World Economic Forum, the developments in genetics, artificial intelligence, robotics, nanotechnology, 3D printing, and biotechnology, etc., etc., are all building up and amplifying one another. The debate on this transformation is often polarized between those who foresee limitless new opportunity and those who foresee massive dislocation of jobs. How has your organization prepared itself in meeting the challenges of IR 4.0 and what are the what are the future of jobs then, just before the onslaught of COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, Mr. Said, you are the first to go. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Xiao, uh, distinguished speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, of course, we are in still in uh, MCO, uh, <coughs> having this, uh, having this uh, pandemic situations. And I pray for everyone's health, everyone's uh, well-being. 
Okay, uh, straight away to the questions, Prof. Uh, I think from an uh, industry's uh, view, um, how do we prepare ourselves uh, meeting challenges in IR 4.0? Um, first of all, is self-awareness, and because of the changes have been have been occurred before uh, when we are start hearing about this IR 4.0, it's about automation, it's about Internet of Things, digitalizations, and so on. So, in terms of organizations, myself uh, and the companies, uh, I mean, uh, first of all, self awareness: what's going on? We have to understand everything. What have what what's new? in the world right now, what has been created, what has been invented in terms of uh, uh, from, from the technologies itself. And uh, we keep updating ourselves. Second thing is keep updating ourselves with what's surrounding. Of course, when I think obviously when, when, when uh, Apple company, Samsung company come out with all the magnificent devices, smartphones and everything, and then the apps, uh, applications, uh, people are not, uh, uh, people are uh, adapting to that. Uh, so many things changes, so many new things come up, so many things we have to adapt uh, as a new lifestyle, for example. And then uh, in terms of uh, organizations, uh, we will uh, <coughs> get together as a team and then uh, meeting, discuss and everything. What should we equip ourselves? What should we equip ourselves? What uh, should we apply uh, from the devices or tools or new apps to apply it to the management and operation? So that we can, number one, I think, cost saving, cost reduction, of course. And number two, time saving. Uh, there's a lot of things uh, maybe uh, in the process of time consuming, so lots of time have been consumed. We can shorten the time. That's what I mean. And then uh, increase efficiency in operations, in management, in administration, and then increase the controlling process, of course, uh, uh, especially in the operation side. Uh, that is uh, what uh, I can say in my opinion in our preparations. <laughs> and I think uh, for me, myself, I'm uh, in Saudi Arabia, we are in hospitality and food and beverage business, but I I believe that so much more has been implemented in other sectors, in other industries, so much more, especially the technical part, engineering part. And um, IT, IT have been essential. IT, software, content provider, uh, coding, all of these have been essential because all these things have been, uh, have been in the world right now and we have to adapt it. So, uh, <coughs> future jobs then just before the onslaught i think in front of us what we've seen so uh, uh as what as, and we apply and we and we get the service <laughs> i can say that it will be uh transportation transportation have been changed uh taxi drivers have been a problem with that because grab drivers is coming <laughs> The, in our, in Saudi Arabia, we have Karim, same same thing like Grab, like Uber, we call Karim, e -A -R -E -M. also, uh, and then the online tradings, everybody know about that, people are purchasing online right now, uh, have been started, this is what I'm talking about before the pandemic, so that that is, I think that, that that's uh, answering the question, Prof, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Said, and uh, we move on to. Uh, by the way, Mr. Said is a uh, accountant by profession, and we move to Dr. Zul, who is uh, more on the human resource side, and uh, he has been the uh, 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 what's that? The CEO, the Council of Islamic uh, Finance Educator, and uh, and uh, with that, I would like to uh, pass on to Dr. Zul for your opinion, please. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator, Prof. Xiao. At uh, Sejahtera Leadership Initiative, during the pre-COVID-19 pandemic, we were uh, working on a parallel idea, what we term as the fifth human revolution. 
just like the industrial revolution that go into the fourth version we wanted to construct a human revolution that has gone past its fourth dimension we were about to articulate a vision of the fifth dimension as an alternative world view that is able to check on the fourth industrial revolution and beyond and at the same time we try to locate where we are in this whole continuum of so of the so called industrial revolution of course there will be five six seven industrial revolution coming on but all to be contained within the fifth human revolution world view as a safeguard for ourselves moving forward now in the fifth human revolution human and machine will dance together metaphorically and in fact during the post davos uh, world economic forum props mit and tata promoted the team blockchain plus artificial intelligence plus human equal to magic the equation is impossible ai will help increase human labor productivity blockchain will help give access to banking and intangible forms of capital connected to person credibility to the unbank robot will help human align roi with purpose but all this will require intentionality business ethic and moral clarity so the fifth human revolution we call it sejahtera revolution will be marked by unprecedented unprecedented creativity and a sense of shared common purpose as we work together to blend progress and profit toward purpose and inclusivity so in other word we should not be frightened uh, you know by the fourth industrial revolution you know because it is man made we created it after all we must not be subservient to this you know human will still be the boss you know the intelligence come from human so as such at that time pre covid 19 we were talking about how to provide the balance between this onslaught of fourth industrial revolution with the human dignity and human need that is required so that was what we were doing at that point of time before pre covid 19 sir thank you i'm done bro for the first question okay okay sorry sorry uh, okay uh, thank you uh, dr sul and uh, we move on to uh, dr tan and he would like to be called tk yeah he has uh, more than 35 years of uh, global leadership entrepreneurial consulting and product management experience most of which were in the silicon valley where he has led several successful startup exits and acquisitions his exceptional leadership in helping companies such uh, launch Uh, and scale platform services product into rapid transformation market has earned him a place in the international who is who in networking so please uh, dr tan please share your experience on this uh, ir 4.0 thank you thank you once again prof cl and it's such an honor and privilege to be back here especially within the au family of uh, community which is something that i have grown very fond of Uh, did a lot of wonderful things here and good to be back and certainly I love the answers given by 
uh, first two panelists, which I think gives me really the pivot to talk more about IR 4.0, right? So, but before that, maybe we, what we should do is take a, maybe a couple of steps back and look at what happened pre-COVID. And I think our previous speaker did an excellent job describing the activities around IR4 pre-COVID. And if anything that we can take away from during COVID and post-COVID, assuming we are over COVID, but I think we're still not quite over yet. Uh, one of the things that I think the coronavirus, right, has done for society and economies of the world is that if anything at all, it has accelerated the growth and the adoption of digital transformation. So. I think what we're in right now is a very interesting phase whereby we have got waves of changes happening globally. The first wave obviously is now that we have vaccines identified, right? We're seeing advancement in treatment and the discovery of more vaccines that can help us protect ourselves against the virus. And the second wave, which is also coming on very strongly, refers to the economic aspect, right? Which is basically every country's economies that have been impacted by COVID are now beginning to get themselves off the floor, right? Everybody's doing it at a different rate. And, and I think for that reason, a lot of economists, when they were polled six months ago, maybe even a year ago, what kind of recovery shape we would, we would see, a lot of Zs and Ys and Ws. But I think right now, based on at least the surveys done that I've seen, it looks a lot more like a K-shaped recovery for a lot of the global economies. And I think it's becoming evident that, and it's very appropriate for this for this webinar as well, the COVID has actually reshaped a lot of economies and at the same time, very appropriately destroyed a lot of jobs. And But at the same time, it also has created a lot of opportunities. So I kind of like to look at it from that angle of the types of opportunities COVID has given us is something that we should take advantage of. So how does that fit into IR 4.0? Well, Fundamentally, IR 4.0 is bringing about automation. And today, just quoting the words of uh, Mr. Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, right, in, in his last quarterly report last year, late last year, he said that we have seen essentially two years of digital transformation happen in two months. And that's the rapid rate of takeoff. And I think if anything at all, we can credit that to IR 4.0 as being one of the catalysts. Because of COVID, a lot of organizations, large and small institutions, have taken on a lot of the digital initiatives. We've seen the lights of Zoom, video conferencing. We've seen the lights of remote working, hybrid working. All of that is becoming very much the new normal today. So for me, it is certainly very enlightening and clearly we feel, and I want to salute all the frontliners out there who have helped to stem the flow of, of deaths and spread of diseases. At the same time, I think it also represents a great opportunity that we should take forth with IR 4.0 to take advantage of the new opportunities that, that are right in front of us. And hopefully we'll get more chance to talk about that in your next few questions. Thank you. Uh, TK, thank you, TK. And uh, we, we, so far, we have no questions yet. And uh, we move on to the next question. Uh, this is to uh, pose to Dr. Zul first. The changes were seen to be exacerbated by the COVID 19 pandemic in early 20s, in, in tw early 2020, sorry. Coupled with the long term changes already triggered by the IR 4.0, which has consequently increased in speed and depth. However, due to the need of complying to social distancing, the current health pandemic has led to an immediate and sudden spike of unemployment across <laughs> several key economies, displacing workers from their current roles. Specifically, how has COVID-19 pandemic affected your organization in terms of economic contraction and human resource management? And how has your organization weathered the COVID-19 storm? Dr. Zul? Thank, Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. So let, let, let me recall this industrial revolution. You know, just just to refresh, uh, you know, re refresh us as well as uh, our audience. 
the first industrial revolution happened in 18 uh, 19 centuries in Europe and North America featuring steam engine second industrial revolution in 1870 to 1914 featuring st- steel oil electricity and combustion engine the third industrial revolution in 1980s where we have digital revolution featuring personal computers and the internet and with the fourth industrial revolution for the 21st century advancing on artificial intelligence big data robotic the iot uh, blockchain and uh, crypto so that you know that's the, the, the dynamic of it in the first question i was talking about uh sejatra leadership initiative uh, as a lie uh, you know wanted to provide the balance by, by coming up with the fifth human revolution to balance all this uh, technologies that coming the in uh, like the tsunami i agreed with sikke just now that that the global economy is expected to shrink by more than 4% this year the deepest downturn since the second world war the very difficult ways in which industry sectors have been impacted in such a short period of time is already reshaping the last parts of our economies and unemployment level for uh, under employment are climbing very sharply many organization are going through restructure as well as accelerating changes to ensure they are more agile and resilient for uncertain times ahead you know in this aspect i uh, i'm talking to, uh, you know from the perspective of world union of small and medium enterprises which i happen to be the representative uh, in malaysia so this is what i have seen the, the, the uh, smes of uh, aggressively doing uh, restructuring restructuring i think you are aware now get the for fmb uh, the uh, the focus is you know uh, for such kind of business could move forward is through to grab services you know to delivery you know yes. so from all this through it is uh, the opportunity for uh, 2020 to be a year that defined or uh, a new era in many positive ways i agree with sikke on that we we have had to adapt and innovate rapidly in our ways of working and responding to the restriction that few possible which is impossible before now with we can do it we can uh, we can uh, move forward out of the box we have put people at the forefront of our business agendas the i'm a hr guy so i got to see that uh, the human has got to do, to play the forefront roles you know uh, in the business agenda and our duty to care for those who work for us but also those who rely on for all our basic needs we have learned at scale how we can work in completely different ways and be productive and even strengthen engagement and trust with stronger communication more compassion by breaking down hierarchies the crisis should be a catalyst for many changes that have long been needed never have we learned more about these things and the imperative to make them happen so as the fifth 
human revolution has got to move on, you know, as the agenda for the world. If the team can be paraphrased to mean human time machine, then one is tempted to interpret it as an interaction between primordial, natural, or human intelligence and artificial, synthetic intelligence in the broader sense. There must be a balance on this. So rather than depending on how we treat technology, you know, my bias is to ask how we treat human instead. Thank you, Prof. Over to you. Thank you, Dr. Zul. And uh, by the way, Dr. Zul is the ambassador of the World Union SME an industrial psychologist. So we move on to TK now. Uh, TK, what is your view on the, um, the, uh, on the uh, new uh, onslaught of the uh, pandemic? TK, we can't hear you. Please uh, unmute. Uh, TK, please unmute. Please unmute. Sorry okay. about that. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Wonderful. So I, I was just saying that I resonate very well with um, the last speaker's comment. And I think really the onslaught of whatever we're facing today should be embraced as an opportunity. There are so many ways to look at, obviously, COVID-19 as a destroyer of jobs and destroyer of economies. But... You know, I, I have been basically studying a lot of companies as part of my job over the years, over the decades. And I've looked at almost almost close to a thousand companies and I've spoken to almost the same number of CEOs, CIOs. And the kind of advice that we give out to companies who are impacted by you know, this COVID-19 is very similar to what I think you would see happening in the world today which is given that we have a pandemic situation today and given that we recognize certain jobs will be displaced, right? Jobs that require high human touch, for example. A lot of opportunities exist in other areas and companies can essentially help employees reskill and upskill to focus their efforts into other vocations so clearly, we know that the pandemic has caused a lot of people to work from home and work remotely. And I think this is an area where there's tremendous opportunities. We are already seeing e-commerce basically re-energizing themselves, resurging as a new boom era. Certainly, that would be an area. Certainly, in the sciences, in the areas of STEM, science, technology, engineering, those areas are certainly very important. And I think it's important that, again, depending on your age group, right? So if you are in the Gen Zs, you are probably born in the era of social media and internet. And for you, you are probably in the best position to take advantage of this change in the economic landscape by taking on jobs that allow you to express yourself fully in terms of technology. And that's why digital transformation has been accelerated rapidly as a result of what we're facing today. And I think this is, to me, it's a great opportunity because from where, from where we sit, right, we talk to a lot of organizations and we're seeing them making changes towards that, that area. And this allows basically everybody, not just the Gen Z people, but even older folks, baby boomers, right? I've seen a lot of changes in terms of how they are reskilling themselves because they may not have the necessary technical skills, but they have a ton of experience because of their years of working. They have a lot of experience working with people and motivating people. And I think this is probably the best way to essentially allow the experienced people to gain knowledge in specific domains and the younger folks to basically take on more leadership role and also apply some of the skill set that they have learned in the technology domain. 
Over to you, Prof. Thank you, TK. And uh, well, what have you uh, got to uh, uh, say, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Said, on this uh, so called uh, the onslaught of pandemic? Uh, Mr. Okay, Said? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Prof. This, this is a very sad story. Uh, but I'm lucky to be in it because this is a new experience to me. So we have to close the operation temporarily because no sales coming in. So no expenses can be, can be done. So it's affected to all the team and the organizations. I have to retrench workers, so many. And right now we only have the administration's people only two of them, three of them, in Saudi Arabia. I, I'm, I'm now live in Malaysia. I just come back home three months ago. Uh, I have to run at loss um, because it's still cost to be a uh, cost occurred. Uh, uh, at the same time, uh, I have to sell the assets. Lots of assets have to be sold just to cover back a little bit money from it. And then I have to terminate all the rentals from all the uh, uh, outlets and our kitchen as well. And it's so stressful. It's so emotional, so uh, psychological effects to the workers, especially. Uh, but what to do? We need to face the fact that we have been affected and not only us and it's affect the tourism as well the hotels, business, accommodation, FNB, of course, the airlines, um, we are all affected. So we are running at minimum, minimum operation, some of them, minimum op operations, and some of them have closed shop even. But uh, this is a good experience we are falling down, when, when, when we fall down. Uh, we never, we never faced something like this before. So I think if it's happened in the future, so we know what to do. Uh, this is in terms of business uh, and corporate uh, sectors. Uh, and we have to think very fast. And we have to think effectively for the best of everybody, for the best of the situation. What to do? Uh, some of some of the companies try to uh, explore into new things. Yeah, uh, they try to switch the sectors. For example, from tourism into trading. Uh, those uh, in Saudi Arabia who have been there know uh, uh, the business will be Umrah and Hajj. It's, it's a big business uh, actually because it involves lots of people. It will be uh, benefited to not only hotels and hospitalities, it will be affected to the logistics, will, uh, will, will be benefited to the, to, to the food, food uh, industries, uh, 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 um, uh, courier of goods, yeah, log logistics uh, on, and all of that. Um, well, that's what happened to me and lots of my friends. Uh, but however, I agree with Dr. Tan, when there's threat, it will be opportunities at the other side. So I, I can say that those who are in medical sectors, those who are in the glove and rubber sectors, will benefit on, it, uh, 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 on this pandemic. Um, I can say the gold price is soaring up. So, I can say that all people in the uh, uh, jewelry industries benefited from it. Even they have bonuses, maybe. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, okay, ans answering uh, how we weather this COVID-19 storm. Okay, everybody is talking about vaccines right now. Everybody is uh, applying it uh, and uh, ready to take it. Uh, hopefully, uh, this new uh, progress will be positive. Hopefully, so inshallah, God willing, uh, if everything's go positive, everything's go well and under control, 
we can come back to business and come back stronger. That's from hip hop. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Said. And uh, we we will take uh, the questions from the uh, audience and uh, the viewers. Uh, the first question is from Mr. Wilson Dim. What type of jobs will be impacted, and how and what can we do? What type of jobs will be impacted, and what can we do? So I pass on to TK first. Yeah, very happy to answer that, actually. It's a great question because, as I said earlier on, what we are experiencing is not going to be a normal recovery for most economies of the world. It's going to be a K-shaped recovery, meaning that certain jobs will have a huge demand where, certain, where other jobs will see a decline. And I can tell you, you know, as, as what was espoused by my previous speaker, the F&B entertainment industry has been badly hit. And I think this speaks very well to, you know, anything that has to do with travel, air travel and hotel, um, even the construction industry. Those kinds of industry will be badly hit because of the high touch content. And this is going to be a challenge and it's going to be uneven in terms of recovery. Other kinds of opportunities that exist will be the type that I talked about earlier on, the e-commerce, things that require skills to be online. So if you are going to be focusing and re-strategizing right, your learning journey, it would be great to focus on those areas because those areas will allow you to add tremendous value to your organization if you already have one, or you're planning to look for other organizations such as to switch jobs. Those are the kinds of areas. So I think, you know, we're fortunate today, we have tremendous advancements in technology. You know, I, I'm personally a data scientist. So we can look at things like data science, data analytics, blockchain, cybersecurity, right? Because there is more demand to go online. Guess what? There's more opportunities for the bad guys to hack into your network and to create more yeah. problems for you. So therefore, cybersecurity becomes equally, if not more important in, in this in this domain. So, so if you look at it from that perspective, right, there is a shift. There's no doubt about it. Certain types of jobs, jobs in the aviation, the tourism industry will be impacted. Although we can use technologies like AR and VR to try to supplement some of the losses. But I think it would be foolish for anybody to think that we would see even recovery for all industries. It will be very uneven. And as I mentioned earlier on, industries that will be very impacted will be those that require high human touch. Industries that don't are not affected as much that will have great impact on future of economies and the future of jobs will be those that require you to spend more time online and basically give you the ability to essentially add value to businesses that transact online. So e-commerce, B2B, B2C, B2B to B2C, and all the variants of, of B2C and B2B technologies. We're seeing tremendous growth, quite frankly. Uh, you know, you can see from the lights of Amazon, Alibaba, these companies are still hiring at breakneck speeds, right? So. But other companies that are in the tourism industry, the airlines, they are suffering. So that's a reality, unfortunately. And I think as, as a form of call to action, if you are trying to decide how to reskill or rejig your career, think about it from that angle. Find areas or expertise where you can reskill and take advantage of this change in the industry. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Tan. And uh, uh, Mr. Said, any, uh, you said you seem to lay off a lots of jobs. So uh, maybe you have a first-hand experience there. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Said? Sure. Yeah. Any, any uh, uh, answer from you from this? Uh, what type of jobs will be impacted and wha what can we do? Again, like, like what I've said, uh, yeah, uh, in terms of industries, industries that affected, that's affected by the pandemic, there will be most, um, most, most affected, and lots of jobs uh, have been gone. I think. Um, so, uh, 
yeah, your, your, the question is, uh, what is the jobs have been affected? That, that's it. All, all those people in the FMB areas, all, all those people in, tour, in tourism, the hotels, all the uh, people in the operations of the hotels, and uh, uh, well, if we're talking about F FMBs, uh, I can say that it's chefs and the cooks and uh, service people, uh, frontline people, uh, the, the, the front front people, and then uh, in, tour, in, in hotels, we can say that uh, all the, uh, uh, what we call it, the maintenance, the, uh, the, the um, uh, what we call it, the, uh, the uh, all, all those people in, in, in all support areas will be affected. They lost jobs. They have come back home. They, they, have, they have been retrenched. They have been compensated, in fact. So, alternatively, what, what I can see that some, some of them turn into be uh, self entrepreneur, small businesses, selling food on the streets, maybe. They come back home. Uh, my, 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 my people mostly from Indonesia. So, you imagine from Saudi Arabia, I have to buy their tickets, uh, get everything done, all the visas, send them to airport. It's very sad. It's very, very emotional at that time. But they have to go home, and I don't know what they they what what, what happened to them in Indonesia right now. Hopefully, they are doing well. Uh, maybe they go into agriculture, maybe they go into businesses, helping their parents, maybe helping everything. Try to survive. Try to survive, and you may you you cannot. What I say to them, you can't stop thinking, because for the sake of your family, for the sake of for the sake of yourself, you have to survive in this. Do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes for you to sustain, at least. That's from me, sir. Oh. Okay, thank you very much, um, um, Mr. Said. Uh, uh, Dr. Zul, I would like you to answer another question because you are a Malaysian base, right? Uh, taking the question from, uh, maybe you can also uh, share some of the, I mean, your answers on Mr. Wilson's uh, question, but this is a more focused question from Mr. Jim Y. Boon. Uh, question, the World Economic Forum released the Future of Jobs Report 2020 on 2010, uh, 20 October 2020, does this outlook accurately represent Malaysia through its global forecast for the change in supply and demand of jobs by 2025? <coughs> this is the question from Mr. Jun Kwai Boon. <coughs> uh, uh, since uh, Dr. Zul is in human resource, and an expert in human resource, probably this is uh, 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 the right person to answer this. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jun. Uh, that's a very interesting question. Now, if our company is doing global business, having international uh, businesses, therefore, the findings from WEF has got to be right because they are looking at the world, uh, you know, the total world. So if, uh, unless that we just want to do uh, business in Malaysia, okay, they have, uh, the focus uh, has got to be refined. If we are thinking of going international, I think yesterday Prime Minister Tan Sri Mohidin was talking about uh, uh, Malaysian homegrown company has got uh, to grow and become the MNC, you know. So if, if, if we want to uh, take up the challenge of the Prime Minister, therefore, we have got to respond to WEF uh, findings. That is what is required. But to me, as an HR guy, I like to submit this. Future jobs would be determined by the direction of the fifth human revolution. Now, I'm not saying AI, drone, the green technology, data analysis, uh, uh, scientific automations uh, are not important. That is the domain of, uh, of the technology, which we have no choice but to adapt. 
even in my organization, you know, um, all the board members and top management uh, has been given the brief of what is happening out there in the world uh, post uh, WEF uh, 2020 findings you know, that we, we got to adopt. But however, to make the difference that we are superior than the technology, I mean, human is superior than technology. Therefore, we've got to continue to build our human resource capabilities and capacities. There is a need to have critical thinking, proper wise judgment, creativity, analysis, business ethic. This should be the different. Otherwise, we are going to be just uh, the children of the robots. You know, we have got to follow uh, the robotic movement. We were supposed to control the robot. We were supposed to design the uh, AI. So my, I would like to submit that for Malaysia, we have, we have got the, the, the human touch. We have got that uh, human expertise in us. We are very human. Therefore, make the best of use and show the difference. There is our scientists, a sejahtera, our accountant, a sejahtera, you know, our engineers, a sejahtera. How nice the world is going to be, you know, if you follow this kind of uh, new rules of leadership and management. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I yes, hope I answered you. the question. <laughs> thank you, uh, Pro, um, uh, Dr. Sul, for the purpose of international uh, audience, uh, what, how do you translate sejahtera in English? Well-being. Oh, well sejahtera okay. is well-being. So meaning right. that we got to balance. Technology and human being has got to be balanced. We should okay. not be robotics. You know? So this is what we are talking about, sejahtera, and we have got the fundamental of all this, let us strike a balance you know, so that we can control and we can contribute to the world. Thank you, okay, sir. Okay, thank you, Dr. Zul. And I, I, uh, if I may, also like to uh, answer Mr. Ja Jin's uh, uh, question because I've read this report and there's a section on Malaysia. So it is applicable to Malaysia, this report. There's a, a small section on uh, what job is needed in uh, the, the, for future jobs in Malaysia. All right, so we move on to the next question uh, because we are running out of time. The uh, next question is uh, posed to TK first, okay, then followed by uh, uh, Mr. Said and uh, uh, Dr. Zul. The International Labour Organization has estimated that almost 300 million jobs are at risk due to co co uh, corona pan pandemic. Of these, there are of these that are lost, almost forty percent will not come back, or more. Of workers will require reskilling, coupled with the readily of work in twenty twenty one, which will be much different from then from that it was in uh, before COVID nineteen. The willingness to transition to new job opportunities. Mesh with new reskilling and upskilling capabilities can help uh, place young professionals back on track. Online learning and training offers the best platform. Taking cognizance of your organization's current strategic direction, what are the significant skill set clusters that you are currently focusing your reskilling and upskilling effort? Um, uh, PK? Yes, I love this question, actually. I think it's, it's very well thought out, and I love the energy generated by all our speakers here. Very good. So I think one thing I want to say is that certainly, you know, robotics and AI is kind of my area, and I agree fully. It's really about the human being, right? It's the human being is the genesis of all intelligence. And just to answer the question, you know, directly, the, the kinds of skill sets that will be relevant Today and in the future will be the skill set that essentially allows you to add value to your organization or whatever community you're serving in the form of basically communication right when i say communication i don't mean just you and i talking in a room 
I'm talking about mass communication, allowing businesses to generate profits, to thrive, businesses to make new connections with other businesses, as well as enabling distance learning via remote or hybrid environments. So especially in education, right, we're seeing a tremendous growth in distance learning through all the different means, whether it's Moodle, whether it's you know, some kind of a PLS system. But if you are thinking from an engineering perspective, how do I take advantage of these kinds of growth? Certainly software development is key, right? Software development is going to be important and supplement that with a heavy dose and healthy dose of machine learning because that allows you to do a lot of automation, right? So automation is going to drive the future of workforce. And that speaks very well in line with IR4 and maybe even IR5 going forward. So today we're seeing technologies hitting the forefront, such as 5G, right? Cybersecurity has always been there, supporting all the pillar technologies. Blockchain will certainly become very important as the world become more decentralized. And thirdly, if you have interest, right, or maybe some background in areas that are relevant to gaming, AR, VR would be very important, right? Gamification of, of industries is taking off at a rapid pace. And we can see that happening because, you know, I spent a lot of time in the semiconductor industry as well. So we're seeing a lot of GPUs, a lot of high-end processes taking on the mainstream bulk of mm. orders from a supply chain perspective from all the electronic manufacturers in the world. So again, companies like NVIDIA are reaping the benefits of AI as well as GPUs, because that's where the next engine of growth is. So long story short, if I had to sum everything up, if you are planning to figure out where your next direction is going to be, it has to be online, right? It's got to be online because this is going to be the platform of choice for generating new income, for starting new businesses, for learning, as well as for establishing communication. Over to you, Rob. Okay, thank you very much, uh, TK. And what about you, uh, Mr. Said? Any views from you yeah, about this? Uh, so agree, so, yeah, yeah. So I'm so agree with Dr. TK. So lots of uh, things need to be done. Of course, reskilling and uh, upskilling is the most important thing to do. Because if you're not, then you might go, you will, will be, will. It's not solving the problems, yeah. For FMB industries, multi skills mm. I think is will be needed. So, for example, this is I'm not sure this example is relevant or not. But if you are into a delivery service right now, I think the whole management. I think uh, somebody need to be. I I think we we need to add more drivers on this. Uh, we need to enhance the logistic system. Of the, of the company, if you are in delivery services, especially the food, it's happening right now. Uh, but it's, um, I think, uh, uh, if the company is not doing it, if you, you, are, you are using Grab, you are using uh, somebody else to do that for you, uh, so that the supply chain will be beautiful. So, um, other things is, uh, ah, uh, in the future, I mean, in the future, there's some tests about uh, and I think it has been done. Uh, what I mean is uh, the drone will take the job. The drone will send those goods, food. If you order books or you order a uh, uh, shirt or whatever, the drone will take it to your home. And I think we need drone, pri drone, drone pilot, I think, uh, if, if, that's, if, if, if it happened. Uh, so that is more on operational. But don't forget about the management side and the leadership side. I mean, on human skill, uh, the critical thinking, like our distinguished speakers speak before, your problem solving, your interactions with people, your people skills uh, need to be changed, need to be enhanced, especially leadership. You need leadership. Not, we will talk about leadership, so not only the CEOs and the top management. It will be the whole company, the whole team, 
need to be that where leaders create leaders and if you have that <coughs> we, 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 we will have a more efficient uh, management in the company or in the industry uh, and I think uh, you have to um, take into account for IT awareness you must know that I know some of um, especially the uh, veteran people or uh, old uh, old timer in the industries might not get used to it because it's new things and uh, need to be learned through uh, the devices and everything. But ongoing, we we need to we need to learn that we need to enhance on that we need to to be hands on on that. For example, now in the board meeting. We don't have to print out agendas because we will use a lot of paper. Now we are going towards paperless. So the agendas of the meeting will be viewed on your devices, tablets, uh, some sort of that. Uh, you will save papers. That is one example. example. So um, content provider, content manage, manager, apps manager, you might have, uh, you might need to have a bunch of uh, armies of uh, online marketing people to serve the, the 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 online orders from the customers. That will be essential. Uh, it will be a busy department, maybe, uh, because everybody is, is doing online right now. So you must have that department, uh, and it must be efficient because uh, you must make uh, you must make sure that customer satisfaction. I think that's that's it from me, bro. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mr. Said and uh, Dr. Sul. Yeah, the I, I, is on upskilling and reskilling. Yeah, I I I, I totally uh, uh, endorse, echo and conquer. They're my 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 uh, co-panelists, uh, CK and Tuan Said. I just would like to add a line or two only here because I think they have put it uh, precisely very well, and uh, you know I I I have to agree with that. That's very kind. To me, predicting how advances in technology and automation will impact jobs, it is more of an art than a science. I think they they have they they agree with that fact because we are talking about humanity. We are talking about human being that should drive the technology. We lean on data like workforce metrics, the rate of which certain technologies are being adopted, and the macro trend to anticipate how labor market will move. You know. The workforce is experiencing a double, a major double disruption, Prof, because pandemic caused lockdowns and layoffs are coming at the exact time that many businesses are embracing the use of automation, IT, and all those things. So as such, I again have got to submit here now that predicting how advances in technology and automation will impact job is more of an art than the science. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zul. And, uh, okay, we, we don't have uh, questions from the audience. Uh, so we move on to the next uh, question, which uh, we pose to Dr. Zul first. Uh, the future of job survey, Dr. Zul, indicates that organization needs to adapt to the new, to the newly remote and hybrid workplace. In your opinion, what are the future implications of remote and hybrid workplace? And what are the top three strategies, if you can suggest, your organization is focusing and why? Now, I'm, I'm taking this from, from uh, World Union of uh, small and medium enterprises perspective. You know. Because with this future implication of remote and hybrid workplace, it is a new intervention whereby, you know, instead of merely work from home, we can work anywhere. 
Yeah. We can work from Starbucks, uh, the cafe, you know, we can work uh, at the Lake Garden, wherever we are comfortable, you know. So we are now talking about work anywhere instead of just work at home and, uh, you know, uh, having a rigid office, you know, where, uh, where you have been locked with uh, four, uh, four walls, you know. If you can see the world, I mean, uh, you can be more uh, creative for that matter. So my uh, suggestion here is that uh, uh, we need to create fair opportunities for all and real growth of inclusive workplaces, caring for our people and supporting flexible working hours. So you see, it's going to be, uh, you know, inverted comma, like heaven, you know, we, 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 we can work. There's no retirement. There's no, there is no limitation. There is no rule. Imagine if we have a world whereby we are free to do things that we can contribute to the organization, to our family, to our nation, and to the world as a whole, you know. So the three strategies that I would like to recommend here, you know, uh, for, for Malaysia in particular, uh, responding to uh, uh, Prime Minister's uh, speech at the, uh, uh, at the Youth uh, Economic uh, Conference the yesterday, right? you know, I echo him by stating my strategy here. The first strategy, how to build a winning global business, you know. We can learn from uh, you know my co-panelist CK just now and also from site because they have gone through this process. They can talk about the insight and some hidden hidden agenda which we cannot find in the book. You know, so this is what required how to build a winning global business. Number two, we will need to invest in our skill and capabilities. Yeah. as well as looking after our own well-being. So, we are fit for the future. So, whatever learning that we're going to acquire, whatever additional competencies that we are going to develop, it must lead to sejahtera and well-being. Because this you know, will fit well to the future jobs for the future. Number three, we must play our part in innovating, enabling, and supporting change in our organization. Don't let it be, you know, just the, the robot, the AI, the drone will take care of it. We, we are the leaders. That's what Syed said is very well, you know. So we, we are the Sajatra leaders. Therefore, we, uh, we should lead the way, you know. Not the robot, <laughs> the automation lead the way for us. You know. Now, my my point is that when we, so we must play our part in innovating, enabling, and supporting change in our organization, and let from a greater sense of sejahtera purpose, ethical practice, and the principle of responsible business. This is important. Business is not only get to make money, but business is meant get to help the world as well. And I like Masusita way of uh, doing things, preparing uh, a vision of 250 years, you know, which is meant to develop Masusita to become a company or corporation that can serve their people, their nation, and the world. So I, why, are you, why are, am I talking all this? You know? Because to me, this is the only strategy to survive and strive in this uncertain time. We do not know COVID-21 20, will be coming. But if we prepare in the right way you know, and getting our thought properly uh, spelled out, you know, they have our own blueprint. Take action on the strategies that we have developed. I am confident we'll be able to have a better world to live. So I submit 
how to build a winning global business. Do not deny machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence that every leader need to know. Don't leave it just uh, you know to uh, to the expert alone. Because we must understand so that we can contribute to that. And I finally I'll say that suggestive leadership, which include communication, influence, network, business ethic, compassion. So all this has got to be balanced with the uh, mission learning and IT if we want to survive as a human being. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sul. Uh, very inspirational. And then we move to uh, one side uh, on uh, remote workplace. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, uh. I think Dr. Sul have a, have a very, very, very good points and a lot have been covered. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I just go straight away to uh, the impact of uh, what I think the impact of the uh, implications on remote and hybrid workplace. Uh, currently, uh, uh, a few weeks ago, there's some issues about working from home. Uh, the question is whether are you working or are you in vacation? <laughs> that's, that, 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 that's the problem. Okay, not to say it's uh, uh, lots of uh, lots of cases being done, but uh, we found that. It's a problem actually because the effectiveness but however uh to resolve resolve this problem it depends on the head of departments you say uh, depends on the leaders depends on the ceo depends on the chief uh you are taking control of your team you have to make sure that eight hours working whatever uh how many days and um uh, for time being i think in we're still using the traditional way we still need to go to office. And uh, now there have been uh, rules and regulations that only 30% need to be in the office. 70% work from home. Okay. So, of course, a little bit impact here and there because we are still, I, I don't know what other people say, we are still feel that when you are away and we are only have a Zoom meeting, it's different things when we have physical meetings. For me, I'm more comfortable in physical meetings because I can see you. Uh, we cannot touch today, but last last time we <laughs> touched each other, but now it's stricter. Now, because we just want to, to see the people. We just, yeah, but we have to adapt that this is the new norm. So, yeah, I, I agree with Dr. TK. It's, it's very, um, um, uh, very tiring and very, very, exhausting doing all the meetings on zoom or uh, um, or with with all this uh, application uh, and we just can see the uh, the body language of the people face and what they become but uh, I, I agree in the future we have to adapt this and maybe our son and grandson or our grandchildren will take this as a normal we don't know yeah and that's what I think for the futures. Or for the top three strategies, I think first of all, uh, current uh, uh, um, first thing uh, we are actively doing is dig digitalizations. Everything needs to be paperless, and the cloud computing is very important so that we can save data on that. Uh, everybody can share the data uh, for the uh, effectiveness of management. Uh, IT stabilization. That's the most important thing. If you don't have I'm sorry to say this, but uh, if your service of networking is so poor, uh, somebody cannot reach the internet, especially in the edu education sector. It's, it's, it will be terrible. How, how are you doing? To, how are we going to do uh, teaching at home, uh, PDPR, when some of the population is is, uh, cannot be accessed to the internet? There's a problem that needs to be solved. Uh, number three, that's number two. IT stabilization is, is, is important. Our maybe our telecommunication sector need to be need to be aware of this. Need to do some things for a better. Mess. They are talking about five G now. Go ahead. Now number three, uh, I, I'm still stressing on the leadership skills because leadership leaderships. If you, if you if you have a good leadership skills, firm on that, you have you you, you will solve a lots of problem pro, pro, problem below. Okay, you will have a better manpower. 
you have a you, you will have a stronger team. Leadership is important. Uh, it has been talking for a long time, and I think Dr. Zul agree with me. The leadership is very very essential. Thank you for that's from me. Okay, thank you, Tan Said. And uh, okay, TK, I know you for quite some time, and uh, and I know you moving around very. Uh, I mean, as a group trotter. So uh, this is no. Uh, not something new for you. So, uh, TK, would you like to answer this uh, question? Yes, I would love to, actually. Uh, and, and I've been focusing on some of the questions that have come through, very interesting questions. Let me try to tie everything kind of together, if you don't mind, in interest of saving time. But, yeah, you know, it, it's very, very dynamic. Uh, as I was telling my previous class, I did 80% of my dissertation up in the air because when I was doing my PhD, I was traveling back back and forth between California and North Asia, you know, Taiwan, Korea, Japan, and China, because that's where the electronics industry is. Uh, it turned out, right, as difficult as it may sound, to be a blessing in disguise because up, up in the air in a tin can, there's nothing else you can do after you've watched all the movies that are out there and you've eaten all the food, right? There's no distraction from social media. So in some sense, if I take that experience into the remote working and and uh, hybrid working, it is to some extent quite similar, but there are some so-called cons to this, right? I, I think, you know, I have buddies and friends who have worked in Facebook and Google in, in the Bay Area, and they, it's very interesting what they tell me on some of the internal forums within these companies, because when, when the pandemic first started, right, at the start of the pandemic, Many companies such as Facebook and Google and Microsoft began to offer extra time, weeks of paid time off for employees who had to take care of their children, right? Because children don't go to school. But since then, a lot of them have basically seen problems that come up from that. There's a rift between workers who have parental responsibilities and then there are co-workers who don't have children. Because a lot of times, those childless co-workers have essentially seen this as an unfair, an unfair practice because those with children tend to get more perks, right? Like working from home, time to take care of the children. Whereas those who don't have children don't get those perks at all. So a lot of these things are bubbling up in the internal forum of these companies. And I think even these companies, the giants of the industry are changing some of the ways that they would want to encourage hybrid or remote working. So that's, hybrid remote working is definitely happening still, and it's gonna happen for the foreseeable future, but it's the dynamics, the mechanics of how it's gonna be done that will change. So there's gonna be a lot of tweaking in the industry to accommodate, especially those two groups I talked about, those with children and those without children, right? Because you kind of need to take care of both of them. And since we're on this topic as well, a, a lot of times I've seen some questions come through about me basically being a champion of digital transformation. And I think, you know, I want to put that in context, right? We're not saying just by embracing digital transformation that, you know, you're going you're gonna to be successful in this age. Because we know digital transformation has a lot of pitfalls as well. So it's very important to recognize that it's, it's not about the digital technology. It's not about going online and going e-commerce. It's about really the mindset, right? Because companies have poured billions of dollars into their digital transformation initiatives. And I've seen firsthand, a lot of these initiatives fall flat on their face because they really haven't gotten around to understanding how to use digital technologies because the whole idea of digital technology is to basically improve efficiency and gain more customer intimacy. But because they haven't shifted their, their thinking, their mindset, kind of alluded to my other speakers about changing the human mindset, a lot of times putting technology into place will only magnify these, these weaknesses. So the first thing you gotta do really is you gotta figure out your business strategy. So that comes first before you even think about what digital technology you wanna look at. And most of the time when companies leverage technology, right? they tend to want to bring in expensive external consultants when what they should really be doing is leverage a lot of the insiders, people who work in the organization for many years and they know the internal operations very well. Those are the kinds of people we should leverage to basically gain the maximum benefit from digital transformation. And one of the questions that, that keep coming up forward is, 
you know, people are afraid of being replaced by automation, right? People are being afraid of being replaced by AI, machine learning, when in fact that should not be a fear at all. Because if 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 you feel or your employees feel that their jobs are going to be replaced by automation or technology, then I think it's important for leaders to show that that's not going to be the case because every individual employee in an organization has their own value add to the process. So if we can embrace that, connect the contribution of each individual employee to the process of adopting zero technology, then I think you have a more open ecosystem whereby the employees themselves will embrace it not to replace their job, but to work along with them. A good example would be, you know, robotic process automation, which is currently used in many organizations, like accounting and the medical practices, whereby we're using technology to speed up repetitive tasks, right? Not to replace human beings, but to speed up repetitive tasks, essentially. Over to you, Prabhu. Okay, thank you very much, uh, TK. And uh, we have come to more or less the final part of the, um, the uh, uh, webinar. And uh, in so far, I am very pleased that uh, none of you, I mean, mo most of you are very optimistic about the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, AI as well as the uh, COVID. And, uh, and uh, it really fits the theme of this uh, uh, webinar that is uh, unperturbed, but we mutated stronger. So I hope uh, the, uh, the uh, the pandemic will not last forever uh, with the vaccine. I think uh, it will be uh, just another few months and then we will be out of the uh, uh, office again. And, um, and so far, there's no uh, question being asked. So uh, with that, I would like to thank all my uh, speakers for today. Uh, Mr. Saeed Fadil. Uh, Dr. Zul and uh, TK. And by the way, uh, uh, both the, the, uh, the site and uh, TK is our alumni at uh, EU alumni. And uh, Dr. Zul is also affiliated to us <laughs> as a Lijang uh, member. So uh, we are in the family. So once again, thank you very much for joining us. And, uh, and your uh, thoughts are very fruitful and entertaining as well as uh, enlightening. And uh, Thank you uh, to the viewers also, and uh, and to my technical team who has uh, uh, support this uh, webinar without any uh, technical glitches. So once again, stay safe. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, distinguished. Thank you, Dr. TK. Thank you, Dr. Zoe. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. All All right. Right. Welcome. Thank you yeah. to the chair. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you to AEU. Okay, welcome. <laughs> thank you to Prof. Joe.